All right, I'm in the way back this time because, uh, Nate, your voice is very quiet. Yeah, it is. I'm putting so, you on blast here. Hopefully moving up next to the mic will help that. Absolutely not. No, you're a mouse. You're right. So we're going to take a look at five things that we think Arkham Asylum did wrong. Whoa. It's less dangerous of a video than the Arkham City one, and we, we made it through Arkham City. Uh, nobody showed up at my house and crucified me. Not yet. So I'm thinking that we might be okay, but we'll have to see here. <laughs> So the first thing we have, oh, uh oh, <laughs> who's that? <laughs> the first thing we have here at number five is the boss fights. Yeah, I think the boss fights in this game, a lot of them were fine. Fine, I, I guess they this, the work. The Scarecrow one was good. Yeah, the Scarecrow one the was good. The Killer Croc one was good. Uh, but a lot of the other ones were kind of boring. Absolutely, it's, especially like Poison Ivy. Yeah. But you know, it sucks because I love her in the game. Like, yeah. as a character in the game, she's, she's a really fantastic. good character. Very hot. Uh, but <laughs> other than that, you know, it's like there was nothing to her boss fight. No. And it's the same for pretty much everybody else. And we will get to a specific boss fight later that is so bad that it gets its own entry in the list. But these were very unimpressive. And I think the the biggest problem with them is that they rely way too heavily on the the batarang. Yep, Do dodge out of the way to the right or left, kind of run around a little bit, bide your time, maybe defeat some thugs, batarang, batarang, repeat. That's it, that's it. Yep, just repeat. Especially the Poison Abbey one, like that was yeah, so boring. Yeah, that's, it's really bad. <laughs> uh, especially in hindsight where you see like what they can do with the story. And part right. of that too that I had been reading about was actually like that the boss fights were a last minute inclusion in the game. They weren't originally part of the game. They were kind of shoehorned in there in the final months of development. So what were they planning on having? Not boss fights. They were planning on essentially having it like just be you going up against thugs, eventually culminating. Um, but like you wouldn't fight these enemies in a boss fight, essentially. It's, it's hard to describe, but like yeah. you wouldn't go up against them like that in some huge encounter with a health bar. That seems kind of dumb. What, that original idea? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it may be a little bit, but the second idea was just as bad as the thing because the boss fights suck. Yeah, because they shoehorned them all in. Yeah. So. so if they were a little more unique, I think they definitely could have been better. Right. The second thing we have is the post game. And wow, this is by far the worst post game in the entire series. Now, is the island amazing? Yeah. Is it super fun to go around and like actually discover things in, do the riddles in even? Absolutely. But after you beat the story, there is nothing to do. It is just the Riddler stuff. And the occasional thug that you missed while playing the story. Yeah, that's it. As, and what? most of them are just going to be some crazy guys roaming around outside. Yeah. And I guess the ivy plants? That's really it. Great post-game. <laughs> yeah, no post-game at all. Um, And, you know, you can kind of say... You can reason it away a little bit. It's the first one in the franchise, but at the same time, there were PS1 games with heavy post game. There were SNES games with heavy post game. Like th there was already sort of a understanding that players wanted more than just the short campaign or story of a game to do in it. And they kind of dropped the ball a little bit. I guess the only post game in this other than Riddler would be the, uh, the challenge maps kind of. Kind of, but yeah. But they're sort of their own thing instead. Yeah, when the first time I played through Arkham Asylum, when I beat the game, I actually was very shocked that how little there was. Like, left to do? Yeah, like, I was going around the island kind of like, there should be something else to do, but the island just seemed dead. It is, so. yeah. And that that's kind of the biggest downfall for this game, or one of them for me, is just that post-game. The next thing we have is the combat. Combat is, uh, here's the thing. You can judge it two different ways. You can judge it by back then standards. It's very good. It's revolutionary. If you judge it by today's standards and you go back and play it, you're going to be dropping combos a lot for really no reason. Like stuff won't connect that's supposed to. You'll have to wait insanely long for enemies to get back up after knocking them down or you'll just drop your combo. Sometimes Batman will go flying across the room 300 feet. Other times he'll drop a combo and won't move 10 feet. Yep. It, there's no consistency it's, to it's it. It's bad. Yeah, it's just, it's very inconsistent in terms of holding a combo. And I think that it was refined so much over time that it, it's easy to forgive, but going back to play it now, it is something you'll notice. Yeah, especially after playing through, like, City and Night. 
especially where the, night where, where the like combat was fine. next to perfect. Yep. And then you go back and play Asylum. It, it was kind of frustrating at times um, because you'd be fighting and like you said, you just randomly drop a combo because Batman wouldn't be able to punch someone even though he's like right in front of them, but it yep. just wouldn't work. Yeah. So that was really frustrating for me. I, you know, this is one now that is probably the least of my complaints, but it is on a list of complaints. There's really no customization to this game in any way. Yeah. There's no <laughs> skins. All, the only skin there is is the armored variant, and it's not that different. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I wish it had come back in a later game, but it's not that different from the normal skin. And then you have, I guess, like... In certain releases, you can play as the Joker, like with the PlayStation, like the PS3 release and yeah, stuff like and the, that. Yeah, the Mac edition. Yeah. That's actually the first time I played through the game. Yeah, on the Mac. Yeah. That's was. crazy to think about. Yeah, back in high school, you were playing it on the Mac. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. I guess that's frustrating for me, especially if you go online and look at all the mods that people have done, even for Asylum. Like, there's some pretty impressive skin mods for this game. And skins are not really super high-level content to make. No, you'd think for the first game they could have at least made like one or two yeah. extra skins. Yeah, but... they really could have. Especially because this was sort of coming out in like the height of the the Nolan movies. Yeah. Like they very easily could have put a Nolan-verse skin in here. It didn't even make it in until night. There were plenty of movies to choose from, thousands of comic book issues to choose from, yep. and instead we got nothing. We got an armored skin. Yeah, and that's it. So, I don't know. That's just a little... It, it, that one's more nitpicky, but it's frustrating to me because, like, one of the best things I think about Batman design-wise, and, and the same could be said of Superman, is is that... Well, I am Spider-Man, I guess, too. Is they have, like, these really unique suits that are different for each interpretation of the character. So, like, you look at Batman. Red Sun Batman is incredibly different from normal Batman is different from Injustice Batman is different from Michael Keaton Batman. They're all different looking, but they have like the same heart of the character design. Yeah. So you, you think they could have taken one or two of them and put them in the game? You would think so, especially with how little time it would take and how they already shoehorned in all the bosses. Right. <laughs> so the final thing we have, I, do you think this is our biggest issue with it other than the boss fights probably? I think this is the worst thing about the game, personally. I do too, and that's the boss fight with the Joker at the end of the game. Wow. It uh, was lazy. It was really lazy. It didn't fit the character at all. Like, there was nothing about this boss fight that felt like Joker to me. He would use somebody. Yeah. Like, he would use thugs like he did throughout the game, or he would use Bane or someone, or he'd have a different plan. Yeah. You sort of get to Joker in this, and it seems like he had no end game at all. Like, he had no plan for the end of the, of the whole story. It was almost like his plan was, I'm going to sit around and wait, and then when Batman shows up, I'll Hulk out and fight him. But really, he just wanted to Hulk Batman out. Yeah. Like, at first, he tries to do it to Batman. It doesn't work. So then he's like, oh, I have no plan at all. It's, like, extremely different from all the other entries in the series. Like, Origins, City, even the head version of Joker in Night, they all have a plan in place. And this Joker feels like he just had no idea what he was doing at the end of the game. <laughs> when his plan fell through, he had to quickly switch it up. Yeah, and his plan was really bad. Yeah, and the other thing I was thinking about, like, so his whole plan was essentially to Hulk out and beat up the Batman at the end of it. Well, yeah, well, to, like, turn Batman into yeah. a monster. Yeah. But that was it. Yeah. So and what like... does that really accomplish for him? I mean, like, he wouldn't psychologically beat Batman because it wouldn't even be Bruce anymore. No. At all. It, yeah, it's like, nice plan. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> like, it makes no sense. God. I think the dialogue between Joker and Batman here is very good, yeah. but a lot of that's because of the voice actors. Like right. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, just, they carry that terrible ending. And like, after the boss fight, there definitely is a good, solid closure cutscene. Like, that's not the problem, it's just everything leading up to it. It's the actual fight itself. Yeah, and speaking of the fight, it's the most predictable thing in the world. Oh, yeah. And it really just is, like, dodging, and then he will jump back up and turn around, and he'll always do this posing for the camera thing, and then you'll just knock him back down every time. So those are our five things that we think that Arkham Asylum didn't do perfectly, necessarily. Uh, this game, I don't know if it's my favorite in the franchise, but favorite and best 
made in terms of design are very different. I honestly think this game holds up the best in terms of playing through its story with the atmosphere, the claustrophobic uh, hallways and designs of the rooms, the fact that you can't get out of danger if you get spotted, really. It's like a bunch of thugs see you, you're dead. Right. Like, there's a lot of stakes. You can't in run this anywhere game. or anything. No, and that's something they change in pretty much every other game where it's like, oh, a thug spotted me, I'll just grapple boost away. And that it sort of eliminates some stakes to those games, which this game definitely had. Um, but again, it's a lot of its taste, too. I love this game. I think it's it's a near perfect game, but there's some stuff that I would have changed. So hey, thanks for sticking around. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this video and this series. Maybe at some point in the future, we'll come back to the Arkham uh, five things they did right and wrong. I think there's plenty more to talk about with pretty much all of them. The wrongs might be a little hard for a couple of them, but there's definitely a lot more they did right. So let us know if you'd want to see that. I'm also thinking about expanding this series out to other games. Yes, some Batman games, but I'd like to start doing it uh, for just games in general. So let me know if you're interested in that as well. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. Good night.